good morning in the series of lectures today we are going to deal with one very important topic in surgery that is swelling all of you are aware about about the word swelling swelling is the word which is used by almost all of us in our layman's language also in our routine language also or ever even whenever any patients comes to us the patient itself in his own language or in her own language uses this term that i have a swelling or i am finding the swelling etc the word swelling is one of the very important word in medicine and specifically the branch of medicine that is surgery the swelling is very important topic and the proper and detailed knowledge is required whenever you are approaching any case of the swelling in fact we can definitely say that swelling is the one of the core of topic one of the core topic in surgery you open any chapter in surgery you will find swelling related to that particular chapter related to that particular organ about which that particular topic has been described logically speaking the development of the surgery as the subject surgery as the subject has its origin somewhere very close to swelling if we logically think that how the subject surgery might have been developed or if we see the history of surgery in the history of medicine we can find that the branch surgery has evolved over the period it has progressed over the period and in that particular progress the topic swelling has played a vital role what might have happened initially when the medicinal treatment for the swelling would have been failed and when the medicinal treatment would have been failed in the in the past times that time the doctors in that specific era would have thought that what can be the solution for it if any lump any swelling which is arising in any part of the body if it is not vanishing by means of the medicinal treatment when it is not resolving by means of the medicinal treatment then what has to be done and the answer might have come that can we take it out from the body means the first initial thought regarding the swelling would have been can we take it out from the body means what we can say excise the swelling means if any tumor there are these are the terms somewhat synonymous tumor lump swelling swelling is a general word lump is also a general word tumor is somewhat more specific in that once again there is a classification as benign and malignant but if we generally take the word as swelling and if that particular swelling which would have arisen to any patient and if it is not responding to the medicines which are available or which were available at those particular times in the past that time the community of doctors would have thought that it has to be taken out by means of certain interventions means what it has to be operated means some instruments has to be taken that particular swelling has to be cut from its surroundings and that by taking care of the normal structures 
you have to take it out and take it out of the body. Means a surgical technique has to be used. Means if we take the surgery as the subject, in that particular subject, the treatment of the swelling has played a very important role in the development of that particular subject. So take any part of the body, it may be extremities, it may be cavities and if anything is arising there as a swelling which is not a normal anatomical structure. So provided you should know the normal anatomy. So when that particular structure is appearing there, so has to take it out without disturbing the anatomical normalcy, how can that swelling has to be removed? That is one of the important key in the surgical science. Means if any swelling is arising to any part of the body, to what extent it has disturbed anatomy, anatomical structure or anatomical integrity also we can say and to what extent it has disturbed the functions also. See whenever you consider about a person, a patient you have to or whenever you consider about a disease you have to think to what extent it has disturbed the structure and to what extent it has disturbed the function. Means whether only anatomical integrity is disturbed means a swelling is appearing to any part and that swelling is only causing the anatomical problem. It's, it's some cosmetic disfigurement we can say. But it is not causing any problems with the function. That is also one uh, thing which can happen, one possibility which can happen. And another possibility which can happen is it has disturbed the anatomical structure it has disturbed the anatomical integrity as well as it has disturbed the functions also. Now when the functions are disturbed, we need to find out exactly to what extent or exactly how these functions are disturbed. Means when any swelling comes, what is that particular part of the body? What is the particular organ? How far it has caused the problems with the anatomical structure? And what are the functions of that particular part? What are the functions of that particular organ? And to what extent it has caused the functional disturbances so, to the patient? That also has to be assessed. Now while when patients come to you, they can come with different different presentations means there will be certain patients who are very who are uh, very much aware about their body about their health they can come in very early stages even though there is not a functional impairment so many times you find that there is certain class of people who come with early stages of the swelling even though whenever they find any cosmetic disfigurement also even though there is no not a functional problem they come to you and they put to your attention that there is some problem it is looking something different than normal and there is some other class of people maybe who the people who are not having much medical facilities or who are not very much aware about their disease due to certain reasons many circumstances, those kind of the people, whenever there is a severe disturbance with the functions, at that time only they will come to you. Means if there is some anatomical disfigurement, okay, they do accept that disfigurement. It, it Many times it is found in the tribal areas where there are big thyroids, big goiters, they are least bothered about it because that is not causing trouble to them. So they will be there with, with their goiters for many years. But any swelling when it is causing the functional disturbances that the, the patient is getting much problem means it is causing severe pain, it is causing the problems with the movements or it is causing 
disturbances with the function of that particular part in short. Then only this kind of the people, this class of the people they come to you. And they come to it with the problem and they tell the problem of the function mainly. So I have this problem, the person tells you in, in his own language that I have this problem, I have this swelling or whatever, but now it is causing giving me troubles, now it is giving me troubles. It is there since many days, it is there since many years also. That time they attract your attention. So while when the patient presents to you, it is not necessary that the immediately the swelling is appeared and the patient has come to you. It will not happen every time. Also, there is a difference between since how many days the swelling exists and since how many days the patient found the swelling or it appeared to the patient. Means patient may tell you that I am finding this kind of the swelling since last two months. But it does not mean that the swelling is there for two months. No, it is appeared to the patient for two months. It can be much before that. So it is for you to analyze, it is for you to assess that whether the swelling is only for two months or only for that particular time the patient is telling or maybe much before than that. It is your clinical sense you have to judge. So the patient can come with in the initial stages, patient can come in the late stages when there is a severe problem. Especially to give you the example of breast cancers, in lots of area where their health awareness is not there, especially in the rural areas, because of certain social reasons, many females hide the tumors in the breast. And they come to you whenever the tumor has become very big, whenever the tumor has involved the regional lymph nodes, whenever the tumor has involved the surrounding structures or whenever the tumor has metastasized to the other parts. Or many times it happens especially in the case of the piles that the patient will be having suffering for many days but because of the social reasons patient will be shy to tell or because of certain financial reasons also, this is also one of the very important causes, the financial reasons, patient cannot come to the doctors. And when the piles has become very big, it has, when it is bleeding severely, when it is causing substantial anemia, when it is causing substantial symptom, symptoms, then the people come to you, when, then the patients come to you and they attract your attention. So in practice, you get many patients of the swelling. And you should know the basic things about the swelling. What exactly a swelling means and how to approach a patient of swelling. So whenever any patients come to you, see many times it will happen that patient will not tell you swelling. Means it, whether it is a swelling or not, patient will not be aware. It is your clinical finding. That time it becomes your clinical finding. Patient will tell you certain symptoms. For example, just take any patient with any uh, symptoms of intestinal obstruction because of the malignancies, intestinal malignancies. Now, patient will not be knowing that the, he is having swelling or she is having swelling in the abdomen, but patient will get some symptoms. And when you examine the patient, then you will come to know, then you will come to come across that there is some swelling which is there in that cavity. Many times the patients come to you with abdominal discomfort. They come with abdominal discomfort, they come with abdominal pain. And when you examine the patient or when you investigate the patient, you will find that there is the mass in the abdomen, a space occupying lesion. Many times the patient may come across, patient, you may come across the patient with neurological symptoms with the symptoms of seizures or with the symptoms of say sudden unconsciousness or other neurological symptoms like headache. And when you investigate, the symptoms are there for a long time and when you investigate that particular patient, you will find that there is some intracranial space occupying lesion. Means the 
presentation of the patient will not be only swelling as such. The presentation can vary. So, clinical approach to the swelling is not a limited approach. Okay, swelling is there, then the clinical examination of the swelling. Clinical examination of the swelling is one part. But basic approach has to be much wide. So, means when any patient comes to you a, with any symptom and when you analyze that particular symptom, when you take the proper history of the patient and when you go through properly through a proper questionnaire and the analysis of the symptom complexes which are there in the patient when you go through that, that time you can have a kind of interpretation that whether the symptoms are arising because of any space occupying lesion, a particular cavity or whether that symptom is arising because of any swelling which is causing the problem to that particular part. So, when any such patients comes to you, it becomes very necessary for you to take the history of the patient. Now, whenever you approach a case of swelling, take the proper history of the patient. A patient with abdominal discomfort can have the mass in the abdomen. A patient with some other symptom related to other part can have the pain. And when you properly examine the patient, when you do the proper examination of the patient, you need to find out whether there is any such swelling or any such lump or any such tumor in that specific part of that body. So, pain is such a symptom. So, pain is such a symptom that is also sometimes it can become misleading. Sometimes it can be painless. So, when any such swelling is painless, it may not attract the attention. And many times it is a problem. Many times the way if the patient is not having the pain, they will not tell you any such symptom and it can be accidental finding. Means patient can come to you with some other symptom, patient can come to you some for some other problem. Just take example, patient has uh, come to you for some seasonal cold, very routine, seasonal cold, fever. And when you are examining the patient, respiratory examination, examination of the throat, examination of the neck, examination of the abdomen and up, examination of the other parts also, you incidentally find that there is some swelling and the patient will not be having any symptoms. You incidentally find it that there is a swelling. So, these are the certain incidental findings but carry lots of importance because patient may not be having the symptom but on a long run this swelling can create the problem to the patient. Means patient can come to you primarily for the disease means patient itself tells you, patient himself tells you that I have a swelling and this particular swelling is here in this particular part and this is creating these symptoms. That is one classification. Patient can tell you that okay, I have these kind of symptoms. Patient may not tell you there is a swelling and when you examine for that particular thing, when you examine that particular part, then you will find that there is a swelling and patient will not give you any symptom or any sign related to that part. Patient will not tell you any symptom about that particular part, but whenever patient is coming from some, for some other disease, that time whenever you do the examination, at that particular moment you find that there is some swelling which is in the other part or even it also can happen that patient is not aware about that, patient is coming to you for omitting, symptom like omitting. Patient is, is coming to you for some uh, omitting with headache, symptom like omitting and headache and if when you examine the patient you will find that the cause of omitting lies somewhere in the gastrointestinal mass or gastrointestinal swelling. Means every time the symptom, it is not necessary that the symptom is related to swelling only. So, this is very important thing which we have, we have to keep in the mind. Now, Whenever you are doing the clinical examination and you find that 
you come to the conclusion, conclusion that there is a swelling of any part of the body, then your further process starts. Now this further process means reaching to the diagnosis and deciding the treatment. Reaching to the diagnosis and deciding the treatment. Now here, there are two important things which we have to keep in mind. One important thing is that whether you are able to see or able to find the swelling easily in the superficial part, the superficial swelling, skin and soft tissue swellings or swelling on the extremities, they are easy to find or whether you are, it is not very easy for you to find out the swelling by clinical examinations means if any swelling is there in the cavities like thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, pelvic cavity or cranial cavity. So every time it will not be easy for you to detect any swelling in the, in the cavities which are deeply situated. So here there is a role of interpretation. So whatever the patient is telling you the symptom, it is necessary for you to interpret whether that symptom has a connection with existence of any swelling related to that particular part. So, such is, in such situations, your clinical interpretation or clinical judgment plays a very important role. So, in the examination process of examination of the swelling, it is not only just a clinical examination, you have to once again go for the interpretations also. So what is your clinical finding and what is the interpretation of that particular finding. So whenever you examine any swelling, first of all what you have to see? So there are certain steps by which you should approach the patient. Immediately it will not come for the examination, physical examination. It will be first history and then clinical examination. So whenever it comes to history, without touching the patient, without doing any kind of examination, you are going to take the details from the patient about that particular swelling. So now while taking those details, once again remember the three possibilities, possibilities which we have, I have told you before some time. Patient is aware of the, about the swelling, patient is not aware about the swelling. And patients had come to you for some another problem and incidentally you are finding the swelling. So now when it becomes an incidental finding, patient is not aware at all. So he cannot tell you. When the patient has come with some functional problem, patient will tell more about you about the functions, how the functions has been hampered or how the functions are disturbed in last some time. And when the patient is specifically coming with the symptom that I have a swelling, then that time he can tell you some more details. So it all depends upon the presentation of the patient. Now if the patient tells you that I have a swelling or if the patient tells you that I am getting this functional problem because of this swelling, in those particular circumstances you have to ask the patient what is the duration of the swelling. Since how many days the swelling is there? Once again, I have told you before some time that since how many days the swelling is existing and since how many days the swelling appeared, this carries some difference. Patient may tell you that I am finding this swelling since this much time. But it does not mean that the swelling is there for that much time only. So this also has to be kept in mind. So you may write in your case records that patient, as per the patient, it is since how many, so many days, but it does not necessarily mean that it is for that much time only. You have to ask to the patient how it is progressing, whether the swelling is progressing fast or whether the swelling is as it is or whether the patient is, uh, whether the swelling is growing slowly or whether the swelling is growing very fast. I mean patient can tell you that, okay, I have a swelling and it is as it is since last two months. I have a swelling, 
but it is growing fast since last some week or since last some days. I have a swelling, it is grow, it was growing slowly, but since last some days it is growing very fast. Such kind of different presentations the patient can tell you. Such kind of kind of different history the patient can tell you. The patient can tell you about whether the patient is having pain or not, whether the swelling is painful or whether the swelling is painless. Now very interesting fact, if the swelling is painless, it becomes somewhat difficult because patient will not come to you early. So that is a normal tendency, when the symptom is there then only many times people come to you. So when the painless swellings, many times see it is a, these are, there are the chances that those will be a large swellings, but the patient will not be having pain, so they come to you late. Painful swellings, the swellings might be small or sometimes it may be large also and patient is coming to you, especially for the symptom as pain. And then also it is the patient might be interested to take out that particular swelling from the body. Recent days what happens many times because of this changing era people do the internet search and they search for many things on the internet and they only ask you that okay I have searched on the internet and whether I have this big disease, whether I have that big disease, this is also one of the clinical problem you, you can face in the practice that patient itself tell you many many things that he wants clarification from many, one of the very important question in this regard is the mode of onset. Whether the swelling appeared suddenly or whether the swelling appeared gradually. So if the swelling is slowly growing and swelling is, has suddenly appeared, this also carry the importance in the clinical practice. If any swelling which is growing fast, it should alert your attention, it should alert you, it should attract your attention aggressively, you should approach such patient because there are two chances that that kind of the swelling can be malignant. But if the swelling is not growing fast, it does not mean that the swelling is not malignant. It is a normal misconception that when the swelling is not uh, growing fast, it can be benign. Even if the swelling is not growing fast, it can be a malignant swelling, not necessarily a benign swelling. Or if the swelling is growing fast, it does not necessarily mean that it is a malignant swelling. Sometimes it can be a benign swelling also. So this benign and malignant classification is also very important and the history gives you the idea whether this particular classification is up to what level is useful in your clinical. One of the very important question in this diagnosis becomes, how did the swelling start? Whether it started along with a trauma, whether it started along with some other infectious process, whether it started along with pain, whether it started along with some uh, minor trauma, whether it started along with some position, such kind of the questions can lead you to uh, diagnosis what can be the cause for that particular swelling. There is very important thing is that what is the exact site? So you have to be very precise while describing that particular site. The swelling is there at the forearm, but exactly where at the forearm? Exactly how much distance is from the wrist or exactly how much distance is from the elbow joint, whether it is at the extensor compartment or whether it is at the flexor compartment. Such kind of the minute details about the exact site has to be asked to the patient. Means at this particular stage when you are examining the patient, you should ask to the patient. Patient is telling the swelling at the inguinal region. Inguinal region means exactly where. It is at the inguinal region or at the internal aspect of the thigh, medial aspect of the thigh or it is at the scrotum or it is at the penile region. So such exact specification has to be 
required or has to be asked to the patient and it has to be mentioned in your case records. You have to see whether there is any presence of other lumps you have to ask to the patient whether the swelling is the only swelling or whether there is any other swelling. It is a routine tendency of the patient to tell that whatever is the symptom which is mainly troubling and the symptom which is not much troubling the patient may not tell you. Means if the patient is having the swelling, patient cannot may not tell you that the other swellings which are existing in other parts of the body. So if the patient has a big lipoma, he will tell you about one that particular lipoma, but he may not tell you that there are small lipomas in other parts of the body. So whether there is there is a presence of the other lumps, that also has to be asked to the patient. It is very necessary for the patient to ask about the recurrence of the swelling because the recurrence is very important thing in this particular aspect means a patient was having the swelling it subsided spontaneously or it has been operated previously and once again the swelling has come that kind of the thing has to be asked to the patient because that carries the very much importance in the diagnosis as well as the therapeutics of that particular swelling are concerned. It is necessary to see that whether the swelling is giving rise to any secondary changes, whether the giving swelling is giving rise to any problems like loss of weight, whether the swelling is giving rise to the impairment of the function, means the patient is having swelling at the orbital region and whether it is disturbing the vision, whether it has affected the vision. So such kind of the approach is very much important. If the patient is telling the swelling at the neck, you need to think whether the swelling is of the thyroid or whether the swelling is not of the thyroid. Whether the swelling is of the thyroid, then whether the patient is having any metabolic problems, whether the patient is having any weight loss or whether the patient is having any weight gain, such kind of the symptoms has to be asked to the patient. Once again, if the patient is having any lymphadenopathy in the neck, see neck swelling itself is a big chapter. But suppose just think that there is a lymphadenopathy in the neck, you should ask to the patient whether there is any loss of weight, whether there is any fever, whether there is any family history. This is very important. Whether the patient's mother, uh, for many of his questions, because he gets some information from the internet and many times he feels that I have the same disease. So this is also one of the challenge you face in your practice. The patient's father, patient's close, rela close relatives have any such problem any history of such problem like cancers, like tuberculosis because sometimes tuberculosis is such a disease which can spread. So if any member of the family is having pulmonary tuberculosis and the patient is having any swelling, then you should ask to the patient that there is any family history. So such kind of the questions are, are very much important as far as the diagnosis of the, of the swelling is concerned. When you have taken a substantial history from the patient, sometimes you have to make a questionnaire about that. You need to see whether the patient is, how much the patient is cooperative. Many times it happens the patient will not be cooperative or many times it will happen that the patient is suffering from that particular symptom. Now just take the example, if the patient is having lots of pain, severe pain and you are taking the history, patient will not be in the position to answer each and every question of yours. Because first what he wants, he wants the pain relief. In such conditions, you have to first give the pain relief to the patient, you have to give proper analgesia to the patient, you have to provide such treatment and when the pain is reduced or when the pain has been subsided, in that particular circumstances, you may have to take the detailed history and you may have to ask the questions in detail to the patients. So you have to once again assess the emergency situations. In certain situations what happens? It will be a damn emergency. Patient has come to you with severe abdominal distension and intestinal obstruction. You may feel a mass in the abdomen while examination and you want to take the history of that. Patient will not be in a position to give the history because he is crying out of the pain. So in such circumstances, you may ask to the close relatives about that particular symptom, about that particular feeling, whether they know something about it. And if they don't know about it, then you have to keep that question aside and you have to manage that particular emergency. 
if suppose that patient is having acute obstruction symptoms and that obstruction symptoms are such that that patient needs the urgent exploration or urgent laparotomy then in that situation it becomes very difficult to take uh, ask that so many questions to the patient or sometimes it may even be difficult to do the complete examination and you may have to take certain decisions very fast considering the time in your hand because just remember if the intestines are in the in a state that they can become gangrenous after some time if the peritonitis is severe in such conditions you have very less time for the evaluation in that condition your approach should be fast your approach should be aggressive and you should judge how much your time you are going to spend you cannot say that i will see it later so in such conditions in such circumstances you have to find out what is the emergency situation and in that emergency situation you have to do your best possible diagnosis in that emergency situation and accordingly you have to take the decisions so when these conditions are acute when the conditions are life threatening in those conditions it becomes necessary for you to act aggressively and it becomes necessary for you to do the diagnosis as fast as possible when you have assessed properly that the condition is emergency or not after that particular assessment then further the detail examination of the swelling starts in detail examination of the swelling there are certain important components which we should come across we should keep it in our mind one is the inspection second is the palpation third is the percussion and fourth is the auscultation so these objective assessment criteria are very important as far as the diagnosis of the swelling is concerned so when the patient comes to you and when you have taken the complete history of the patient the next thing comes is the inspection of the swelling after doing doing a thorough general examination it comes the inspection of the swelling so when you do the inspection of the swelling there are certain rules for that the first very important rule is that whenever you are examining the patient one there should be a privacy second there should be a proper light source when you are examining the patient when you are examining a female patient there should be a female attendant compulsory the part which you want to examine it has to be exposed properly this is very important because if the part is not exposed properly there are very high chances that you can miss many things you can miss many of the findings which are very important in the clinical point of view so that area has to be exposed properly if the patient is not very much comfortable the patient has to be counseled properly you can't suddenly expose the patient you have to explain to the patient what you are going to really want to do what you are going to do when you ex- tell this patient in a humble language in a polite way and properly explain why it is necessary to do then there won't be a problem and when you tell the patient that what examination has to be done then such proper position has to be given means there are certain positions if you want to do a per rectal examination there are the specific positions for the per rectal examination either the left lateral or lithotomy if you want to examine for the axilla then there is a specific position if you want to examine for the neck then there is a specific position if you want to examine for the lower limbs then you have to tell the particular patient that how you are going to examine if you want to examine for the conditions like varicose veins in that condition you have to explain to the patient that in which way you are going to examine and how you want the cooperation from the patient now after all the things are arranged if you when you have all the sources with you for example 
you should have the gloves because if the patient is having any skin lesion or if you want to examine the areas like genitals or anal canal definitely you require a gloves so you should have gloves with you you should have necessary equipments with you you should have measuring tapes you should have the otoscope you should have the torch a good quality torch with you so when such equipments are arranged properly sometimes you, you may require the cotton swabs also if there is a discharge or something you require the cotton swabs there so such instrumentation has to be arranged properly if you have a good assistant then it is very good for the process of examination and after all this arrangement by taking care of the patient's respect by taking care of the patient's privacy and by properly giving position and exposing that particular part you should do the proper examination of the patient now whenever it comes to inspection it inspection as the word says that what you are going to see by your eyes and not what you are going to touch palpation means what you are going to feel after touching that particular part so this is the basic difference you should keep it in your mind so by your eyes by a proper thorough observation what you are finding in the patient that is the meaning of the inspection so when you have exposed that particular part where the swelling is the swelling as well as the surrounding part it is necessary to expose the surrounding part also because you need to see the extent of the swelling you are going to do the examination which is called as the inspection now whenever it comes to the inspection the important points you have to keep in mind the important points are what is the situation of the swelling what is the size of the swelling what is the shape of the swelling what is the color of the swelling what is the surface of the swelling what is the characteristics of the age of the swelling how much is the number whether the swelling is having any movements whether the swelling is having any peristalsis whether the swelling is having any pulsations or whether the swelling is having any pressure effects or what are the condition as far as the skin overlying is the overlying the swelling is concerned these all factors has to be taken into the account whenever you are doing the inspection of the swelling now whenever you say about the situation you should see exactly what is the location you should describe that particular location in a terminological language point of view just not the the superficial terms exact locations where it is how it from where it starts from where it ends exactly in the which part so this all details has to be described as far as the inspection of the swelling is concerned in in situation then as far as the color of the swelling is concerned means remember one thing swelling is lying beneath the skin or it can involve the skin now whether the swelling is of the same color of the surrounding skin that is one whether the swelling is separate from the surrounding and it has involved the skin also and to what extent it has given rise to the colors in the changes in the colors of that particular skin these all aspects has to be described properly whether the swelling is causing the change in the color like the color is red or color is black or color is brown of that particular swelling or skin overlying the swelling what has happened to the hairs on the skin because of that particular swelling this all aspects has to be considered we need to see whether there are, there is any discharge on that particular skin just take the example of the sebaceous cyst in sebaceous cyst there is a punctum there is something which is called as punctum on the that particular part so you need to see exactly whether there is any punctum because punctum itself is the diagnostic of a sebaceous swelling but on the contrary in case of the lipomas you will not find such kind of the changes on the skin if the swelling is a malignant one it can cause a 
different presentation and there will be a cauliflower like structure, there will be a cauliflower like irregularity will be seen as far as the swelling is concerned. You can find the irregularity of the surface. So, such kind of the findings are very important as far as the inspection of the swelling is concerned. Now, what is the shape of the swelling, whether it is oval shape, whether it is round shape, such kind of the or it is uh, the swelling having some irregular shape. So, such kind of the description is very much important. What is the size? So, as far as the inspection is concerned, you can uh, not accurately say every time that this is the size, but you can in generally say that okay, this is the size, this is the length, this is the width of that particular swelling and this is the depth of that particular swelling. So, in these three parameters you have to describe about the swelling and you can put, you can put in your case records that this is the particular size of the swelling. Then as far as the age is concerned, whether the swelling is defined well or not defined. See what happens sometimes you look the, you can see the swelling and when you look at the swelling you find that okay, it is properly defined swelling. But sometimes what happens that swelling will not be properly defined, so it is ill defined or it is also called as a diffuse swelling. So, such kind of presentation it has to be explained, explained. so whether the swelling is defined or whether the swelling is ill defined. Then as far as the numbers are concerned whether the swelling is a single one or whether the swellings are multiple whether the swelling is at the same site, multiple swelling or at say one at the same one site one swelling, other site other swelling and multiple such swelling like for example, multiple lipomas. So, the multiplicity also carries the importance. So, whether the swelling is a single one or whether the swelling is whether the swellings are multiple in that particular patient. Now, as far as the inspection is concerned one very important point is which is uh, comes here is the pulsatility. Now, what is pulsatility? Pulsatility means whether the swelling is having any pulsations. Now, all of you know that the pulsations come from, come from the arteries. Now, whenever any swelling is on such a part where there is a major artery, big artery, so overlying that particular artery that is one or it can be arising from that artery. So, there are two possibilities either it is overlying or it is arising from that particular artery. So, if such swelling is either arising from that artery or if the swelling is overlying that particular artery, then in that condition there will be pulsations which you can see. So, the swelling is pulsatile. So, you can see the pulsations properly in the inspection. Now, there are certain important thing is that the whether the swelling is moves on any moment, whether there is a mobility present. Now, this is also very important thing as far as the palpation is concerned, but in the inspection you are supposed to see it means whether the patient is moving with the respiration. If the swelling is in the upper part of the abdomen like liver, gallbladder, spleen, it can move with the respiration. Whether the swelling is moving with the cuffing, whether the swelling is moving with the deglutition. So, such kind of the findings are very much important as far as the inspection of the swelling is concerned. Now, whether the swelling is giving rise to any pressure effect, means what is the pressure effect? That the swelling is compressing on some vital structures and because of the compression on the vital structure, suppose the swelling is compressing on the nerve, it will cause certain neurological symptoms to the distal part. If the swelling is compressing on some vein, it can cause the obstruction to the flow of the blood from the veins. And if it is swelling is compressing on the artery, it can even cause the disturbances as far as the circulation that to that particular part is concerned. So, it is very important for you to assess that whether the swelling is giving rise to any pressure effects or not. The next very important aspect as far as the diagnosis of the swelling is concerned is the palpation of the swelling. Palpations means whatever you feel after you are touching in different way, touching in a different way. There are different methods for it. So, once again 
you should explain to the patient what you are going to do with the patient. You should properly counsel because whenever it comes to the examination of the private parts, sometimes it becomes necessary for you to properly do the counseling of the patient because patient may hesitate sometimes. Once again, another important thing also is that many times patient insist you that without examining you give the treatment but never do that because you can miss many things and you can give a wrong treatment to the patient. So while doing the palpation, there are certain important points which you have to consider, which you have to examine as far as the palpation of the swelling is concerned. The first very important thing you have to do is the temperature of the swelling. The temperature of the swelling has to be seen by back of the your hands. Now while examining for the temperature, temperature will give you the idea that whether the swelling is having inflammation or not. So inflammatory swellings are having the high temperature at that particular part. So while examining for the swelling for temperature, you can touch to the swelling by back of the hands and you can touch even to the surroundings. So you have to compare the normal with the abnormal. So whether the temperature is raised or whether the temperature is less in that particular part or whether the temperature is normal as that of the surrounding. Then the next important come, thing comes is the tenderness. So whether the swelling is tender or whether the swelling is non-tender. Pain means what the patient feels, tenderness means what you elicit. So when you are going to examine for tenderness, you are going to touch to the surroundings as well as to the swellings and see whether there is any expression change to the patient on the face of the patient. If there is pain after you touch the patient, means it is called as tenderness, then there will be change in the facial expressions or even the patient can tell you that I am having pain when you are touching me. So, whether the tenderness is there, up to what extent there is tenderness, whether it is mild, moderate or severeness, severe, sometimes it will happen that patient will not be able to tolerate at all and he will not allow you to touch. That is also very important thing. In that condition, you have to be careful because if you suddenly press, the patient will cry out of the pain and patient cannot tolerate that pain. Especially in the patients of fracture, you can see this thing. So, whether there is tenderness, and you can just grade, you can just properly note that at this point the tenderness was this much, at this point the tenderness was this much and you can give a total idea about the swelling and the level of tenderness as far as that swelling. Now next very important point in this regard is the size, shape and the extent of the swelling. Now size, what you see by inspection may vary here. Here, when you are palpating, you are exactly palpating the borders of the swelling. Means, when you are holding the swelling in your hand, so what is the size of that? What is the length? What is the width? And what is the thickness of that? So, when you see all these dimensions when you describe, then that is the size of the swelling and it can vary from the inspection because you are exactly seeing now. Then what is the shape? It is the oval shape, it is the round shape. In that way you can explain it. And what is the extent? What is the superior extent? What is the inferior extent? What is the medial? What is the lateral? It will happen sometimes that the patient will be in the neck and you can see the swelling, you can feel by palpation, but you cannot palpate the lower end. In such situation, that lower end will be going into the thoracic cavity and you will not be able to palpate it. Or it happens many times in the cases of hernia because hernia comes from the abdominal cavity. So you will not be uh, exactly able to palpate the superior part because it is there in coming from the abdomen. In that condition, the extent is very important. That extent will give you the idea that whether that is extending into some other cavity or not. Or to what extent to the surrounding structure that particular swelling is going and you have to describe the extent in a proper way. As far as the surface is concerned, you can describe it as regular or irregular. As far as 
the age is concerned also you can describe is uh, describe that but about the ages as far as the consistency is concerned you can describe about whether it is a soft whether it is a firm or whether it is hard or whether it is stony hard so this particular finding is very important because if the swelling is soft then the interpretation changes if the swelling is hard then the interpretation changes so normally when the change, swelling is soft it is likely that it will come into the category of benign swelling so as like the sebaceous cyst or as like the lipoma these are soft structures and when the swelling is malignant or bony tumors then in that condition that the swelling can be hard or the swelling can be stony hard one more important point of the clinical examination is the fluctuation fluctuation means whether the swelling is containing any fluid or not so there is one test which is called as the fluctuation test so you have to hold the swelling in one hand you have to press on the other side and when you press on the other side the uh, contralateral side you can feel the fluid thrill and that is the fluctuation test which is called as the positive and this is one of the important examination point as far as the palpation of the swelling is concerned then fluid thrill you can feel whenever you tap on the swelling you can feel the fluid is moving in, the, in that particular swelling especially ascites so here whenever you tap on that particular part then you can feel that there is a fluid is there in that particular swelling then there is one more is the translucency when you see the translucency you have to should have a torch in the hand and when you put the light from one part of the swelling after holding the swelling in the hand when you put the torch from one part you can see the light is passing through that particular fluid if it is a clear fluid the light will pass very nicely through it and you can see the lucency this is called as the translucency is positive one more test is the impulse on cuffing after cuffing the hernia will come out the contents will come out especially in the umbilical hernias or in the inguinal hernias the intestines or omentum will come out because of the increase in the intraepidermal pressure so impulse on the cuffing is a test especially used in case of the hernias so in case of the inguinal hernias in case of the incisional hernias in case of the umbilical hernias when the patient cuffs and whenever there is increase in the intraepidermal pressure the swelling come out comes out from that particular orifice and you can see the impulse on cuff, cuff positive even you can by inspection also you can see that there is impulse on cuff that after cuffing the swelling is coming out and by palpation you can put your finger there and you can feel that after cuffing the swelling is coming out the next very important test is the reducibility this is also done in case of the hernias so reducibility means the swelling is there it is existing but when the patient lies down it is going inside especially in case of the swelling which are in the abdominal cavity so when the patient stands up in the swelling will come out and in case of the inguinal hernias and you can see the swelling it will extend into the scrotum also and when the patient lies down the swelling will go inside and you cannot see the swelling when the patient is in the supine position and this test is called as a reducibility so he this characteristics of the swelling is called as the reducibility of the swelling then once again very important thing is that the compressibility whether the swelling is compressible means after putting the pressure whether the swelling is vanish after putting the pressure whether the swelling is vanish and when you release the pressure whether the swelling is coming up so this is one of the test which is called as compressibility and the next test is the pulsatility as we have described in the inspection also when the patient swelling is lying on some vessel especially artery so that pulsation can go into that swelling pulsation can be transmitted so whenever the swelling appears to be pulsatile for the inspection when you palpate and when you feel the pulsation then in that condition that pulsatility test is positive there are two types of the pulsations one is the transmitted pulsations and second is the expansive pulsations in transmitted pulsations your finger moves up and down whenever there is pulsation and in expansive pulsation your finger moves as well as separates finger moves up as well as separates and that expansive pulsation suggests that the swelling is arising from the artery so whether the swelling is arising from the artery or the swelling is near the artery this is the test which you have to 
describe which you have to do as far as the examination of the swelling is concerned and what is the relationship to the surrounding structures. Whether the swelling is causing any compressions, whether the swelling is giving any distant effect. For example, if there is any swelling at the knee joint and it is causing the compression on the veins of the lower limbs, whether the swelling is present at the inguinal region and it is causing compression on the uh, femoral vessels, whether the swelling is there in the neck and it is causing some compress compression effect as far as the trachea is concerned, as far as the esophagus is concerned, it can happen that the big swellings in the neck, it can cause compression on the trachea and it can cause the respiratory difficulty. It can compress on the esophagus and it can cause the difficulty for the deglutition. So, all such finding as far as the pressure effects are there has to be mentioned properly and whatever the findings are related to inspection has to be mentioned in the inspection category. What are the findings which are related to the palpation? Those has to be written in your case record in the palpation category. Then next comes is the auscultation and percussion. So, by percussion there are notes, the one is the resonant note and second is the dull note. Whenever there is any air, it will give rise to a resonant note and whenever there is any fluid, it will give rise to a dull note. So, whenever you are doing a percussion on the swelling and if it is fluid, then definitely it will give rise to a dull note. Whenever there is uh, air inside, it will give rise to a resonant note. So, whenever there is any distension of the abdomen and when you are doing the percussion of that uh, abdomen, then when there is a resonant note, you can say that it is a bowel containing the gases and when there is a dull note, you can say that it is fluid, there is accumulation of the fluid in the abdomen and you can interpret it in that way as far as the percussion is concerned. In case of auscultation, any swelling having pulsations, the auscultation has to be done and by auscultation you can find the murmur, you can find the flow of the blood and you can find the murmur. Directly it is, you can say that the swelling is arising from the vessel or it is near the vessel and those findings of the auscultation you can write in your case records. So, these are the certain basic things. There are still many more details about it, but these are certain at least basic things the students of the graduation or post graduation should know as far as the diagnosis of the swelling is concerned because this clinical examination is very important. And after doing this clinical examination, you can have a data of the case record and after putting the data together like the patient's history, patient's complaints, patient's findings of the general examinations, the patient's finding of the systemic examination and the patient's findings about the swellings, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation and by putting all these data together, you can make certain points that these are the things which are positive, these are the things which are negative and after listing that, these are the positive things, these are the negative things and after listing these, you can make a provisional diagnosis by means of these positive things or these negative things in the clinical examination, what can be the probable diagnosis? What can be the probable diagnosis? It will happen many times you can do the final diagnosis at this spot only. These are called as the spot diagnosis. You can do the final diagnosis like sebaceous, is like lipomas. You can do the final diagnosis, even the malignancies also you can do the final diagnosis. Hernias, you can do the final diagnosis on spot. There is no need of further more investigations. So, these spot diagnosis also you can do. So, such a diagnosis either a provisional diagnosis or a final diagnosis you can do at the same stage and if you feel that there is a requirement of certain investigations so as to confirm the diagnosis or so as to get more details about the diagnosis. In that condition you can go for the further investigations like ultrasonographies, like x-rays or like CT scans where you can get still more details as far as the surgical plan point of view. If you want to do the operation and you want to have some more details, okay, this is the swelling, but I want to know the vascularity of it. I want to know the upper extent of it. I want to know the lower extent of it, which I am not able to elicit for my examination, in my examination. So, these kind of the details you can get from the further test, radiological test. If you feel that certain biochemical tests are important, in those certain biochemical tests has to be done. If you feel that in certain situations you need to do the tumor markers, if you feel that you need to rule out the diabetes, if you feel that you need to rule out the renal failure, if the swelling is arising from the kidney and the clinically you feel that there is a possibility of renal failure also, you have to go for such test. 
So, such blood tests are also important as far as the final diagnosis and the clinical condition of the patient is concerned. Swelling as such is very important topic. The diagnostic accuracy of the swelling gives the clinical success as far as the proper therapies are given in time. If the patient's swelling is malignant, if you miss the diagnosis, it have many times it happens that the patient comes to you late or because of improper clinical examination, because many times patient will hesitate to expose the parts, patient will not allow for the clinical examination and mistakenly you give the medicines without examination. In that condition, there is a higher risk that you can miss certain important diagnosis, you can miss the malignancies and that will be very dangerous to the patient. So, you have to do a proper examination. After doing the proper examination, if the patient comes to you early, it's very good for the patients also. And if you diagnose the swellings properly by proper clinical examination, because proper clinical examination is the key in the diagnosis of the swelling. And if, if you diagnose the conditions early, especially if you diagnose the malignancies early, then there will be very good results. Because if you diagnose it in the early stages, the long term recovery of the patients will be very good. But on the contrary, if the patient goes, comes into to you in the metastatic stage, in that condition, the prognosis of the patients will not be that good. So, as a clinician, you may be undergraduate, you may be a postgraduate, but you should be able to approach the patient of swelling very accurately and you should be able to investigate it properly for the welfare and good outcome of the patient concerned.